Today I'd like to talk about another one of the greatest lies in physics, virtual photons. Now, virtual photons are a type of quantum fluctuation, hypothetically, that contains two photons. And these are a photon pair because photons are its own antimatter. So a matter-antimatter pair of photons is a pair of photons. And so in the early days of quantum field theory, when they were considering the particle pair model of quantum fluctuations, photons was the first thing they thought of. And so much of quantum field theory developed with the photon pair model, or the virtual photon model. But that is problematic, and I'll describe why. But in addition to, to that, they had not only virtual photons being the entire quantum field, discounting other types of particle pairs, like electron-positron pairs, they also decided, well, we'll just make this the gauge boson of the electric magnetic forces. So supposedly these virtual photons transmit all of the electromagnetic forces and cause electromagnetic interactions to happen. Even though they don't actually explain physically how that is, how a photon transfor uh, transports information from uh, one body to another, or how those bodies accelerate. So it's one of those things they put a checkbox and say, oh, we figured this out, it's virtual photons, but then they don't explain anything. Now the reason we have problems with virtual photons uh, in a theoretical sense is because a quantum fluctuation under Planck's laws for the zero point energy oscillators, energy equals Planck's constant times frequency, E equals HF. Now it can be E equals HF over two when you only consider the energy in the body and not the energy in the quantum field. With photons, we, we usually consider the quantum field energy too because when they're produced or absorbed, you have to consider the total energy. So e equals HF for a photon. And this is also the same energy that you would have for in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So Planck gave us the minimum energy that quantum fluctuation can have, while Heisenberg gave us the maximum, which tells us that a quantum fluctuation is exactly this energy equals HF. It can't be higher and it can't be lower. But if we consider a photon that's a pair of photons, each one wavelength long, each one goes out a half cycle, then another half cycle, then back a half cycle, and another half cycle. Each half cycle has the energy of E equals HF. So when you sum up all the half cycles for both photons, you get 8 HF, which is 8 times too much energy. So then you cut it short, and you say, okay, we'll try it with half wavelength photons. Well, then you only have 4 HF, which is still four times too much energy. And then you go, okay, well, we'll try a quarter wave. Well, a quarter wave, you run into a problem because a quarter wave photon that comes up and back interferes with itself. And that's a destructive interference. And in fact, they use quarter wave thickness uh, coatings on lenses in order to prevent uh, reflection within lenses. They use quarter wave coating uh, coatings of, of rubber on submarines to prevent summer, um, sonar signals from getting bounced off. And they use quarter wave uh, thickness coatings on aircraft, to, on military aircraft to prevent radar signals from being bounced off. So a quarter wave won't work because even if you had it, you'd have to have it in a box to get a quarter wave to begin with, so it reflects, but then it would 
destruct, destroyed itself. And you can't have eighth waves either. So in our search to try to describe what a real virtual photon looks like, you end up with a single half-wave photon instead. And then we have a problem whenever you have a photon, photons produce rotating electric and magnetic fields. In order to produce a rotating electric and magnetic field, it must contain a rotating electric charge dipole. You can't get a rotating field from no charge. You can't get a rotating electric field, you can't get polarization, and you can't get magnetization without ro a rotating dipole. If you have no charges in the middle, then you get no fields. But the charge has to be equal and opposite so that the net charge is zero in order to be a photon. You also have to have two oppositely charged fermions so that photons behave like bosons. So that's a key element to understanding what photons are. And I did a video on a composite model of photons that was initially uh, proposed by de Broglie, where de Broglie thought that photons were electron-positron pairs. And according to my analysis of quantum field theory, the de Broglie was correct. And we can explain photons as a series of quantum electron-positron pairs, with each one quantum fluctuation. And as these quantum fluctuations rotate, they produce electric and magnetic fields through the quantum field, as the quantum field is polarized and magnetized by the photon. And that's how we can get a more fundamental description of a photon. Now this description also is similar to what we see in Feynman diagrams. In a Feynman diagram, they explain how a photon is equivalent over half a wavelength to an electron-positron pair. And this is used to uh, describe pair production, for example, where you can get an electron-positron pair made from a photon because essentially the electron-positron pair is already there. And so we have a wave going and then an electron-positron pair and then the photon wave continues. But in reality, it should just be a series of electron-positron pairs that are counter-rotating. And then we can describe the photon as a composite part of it. So what this tells us is that virtual photons don't exist. What virtual photons really are is they're pairs of oppositely charged quantum fluctuation particle pairs, like electron-positron pairs. They can also be other particle pairs that are real, provided they have equal and opposite charges such as a proton-antiproton -proton pair. And so we basically have a quantum field that's made of these electrically charged dipoles, le electron-positron pairs, proton-antiproton -proton pairs, that make up the quantum field. And we know that this has to be the case from the Casimir effect, because the Casimir effect which causes two plates to be pushed together because of van der Waals forces. And van der Waals forces occur between electric charged dipoles. So the, the whole existence of the Casimir effect proves to us that the quantum field has to be made of electric charged dipoles, which fits the particle pair model that's needed to explain the photons. So, in essence, the space actually is filled with virtual photons, but the virtual, virtual photons are really quantum fluctuation particle pairs, like electron-positron pairs. And then we have a similar thing with electromagnetic theory. Electromagnetism is propagated by the quantum fluctuations. These Quantum dipoles are polarized to form electric fields, and when they rotate, they form quantum magnets. And once they're magnetized, they can organize themselves with magnetic fields. 
So the electric and magnetic fields are real and they propagate through space because of the quantum field interactions with these dipoles that fill all space. So the real answer to what is the gauge boson of electromagnetic field are the quantum fluctuations, but they're particle pairs, they're not virtual photons. So virtual photons are a lie. They always have been. I explained this originally in a little monograph I did called The New Physics or Amana's Proposal in Physics. Um, back in 2001. But I explained a little more in my book, The Zero Point Universe, and again in my more recent book, Goodbye Quarks, The Ionian Theory. And I also talk about it in my book, The 100 Greatest Lies in Physics. And these three books are all available on Amazon. I have links below. And if you purchase one of my books, that helps support me as an independent researcher. So I would appreciate that. And I also have a Patreon account. So if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And look for more videos in the future. And I'll also link to a couple other related videos and papers. So thanks for watching. Bye.